Hello YouTube watch fans, this is Red Vitus and welcome to my channel. Today I have a treat for you. It's a Waltham model 1908 Riverside grade pocket watch. Uh, this watch uh, came to me and the owner uh, told me that it was um, running about 20 minutes fast. And as you could see from the time grapher earlier, it was running indeed quite fast with a low amplitude pretty high beat error as well. Uh, so this watch, um, in addition to cleaning, is probably going to uh, need some tuning, some balance work as well to adjust the, uh, uh, to set the watch back into beat. And uh, let's open it up and see what other repairs this watch may need. It has a nice case. First impressions of uh, the watch uh, looks, looks pretty clean. It's in decent shape. I would guess that this watch has uh, been maintained. We'll get a closer look at uh, some of the jewels later. And um, I'm hopeful that once they're cleaned off, uh, we'll see a big improvement in how this watch is uh, performing. We'll start by decasing the watch. Uh, as with most pocket watches, there are two case screws. And I carefully remove them, avoiding sc scratching the... Um, uh, the back of the plate with the screwdriver and I work the watch out of the case. The The crown doesn't um, uh, mo move out on this case so it's a bit of a tight fit but it uh, came out okay. One of the first things I noticed as well is on the ratchet wheel it uh, says that there's a jeweled main barrel and we'll uh, get a closer look at that later. First thing I'm going to do now uh, with the watch out of the case is remove the balance. This watch has uh, really nowhere to, uh, to pry up the bridge, so I'm just kind of carefully looking for a way to um, move that bridge uh, out of position so I can lift it. And there it goes. And I want to be extra careful here because the balance pivots uh, are very fragile. So there I am removing it, and I'm removing the balance and balance bridge as one piece. Uh, later, I'll show you a um, an alternative way of doing that, where we um, can install the balance and um, and bridge separately. So I left the second hand on the watch, and I'm going to remove that with the dial. And these are the dial feet screws that I'm loosening. There are three of them. They don't have to uh, come all the way out, but uh, just need to be loosened up usually to uh, remove the, the dial. I'm using now a screwdriver to pry up the dial. Now the action of removing the dial will also remove the seconds hand. Looks like one of the dial feet screws fell out, that's okay. I usually put the dial feet screws back in um, into the watch uh, for cleaning purposes. Um, I just find it's easier to keep track of them. So there's the dial with the seconds hand on top. And now you can see it is a, a true double sunk dial. The top of the, the Waltham Model 1908, fairly clean design. A lot of parts are only accessible from the other side of the plate. Here's the cannon pinion. Now I'm letting down the power on the mainspring. Okay, now that the power's off, I can uh, proceed with removing uh, the rest of the uh, the winding gears. This is the uh, the ratchet wheel. 
there's the screw. And I'm going to lift up the ratchet wheel. And there's a, a polished uh, washer that drops out. Now I'll, next I'll do the same uh, for the, uh, the crown wheel, or the winding wheel, I guess it may be called. First here I'm just checking the, the barrel to see if there's a lot of uh, side shake, but it, it, it looks really good. Now this, uh, this, this uh, crown wheel screw is, is a regular thread. A lot of times these are left-handed thread, but not on this watch. This crown wheel also has a, a washer, and you'll, as, I, as I turn it over, you'll see that there's a, another part, there's a, a bearing. So uh, take that off, and now I can remove the uh, barrel bridge. It has three screws. Now, I don't uh, own any Waltham watches, although I have worked on them before. Uh, I do uh, find that they are um, uh, really excellent watches. Uh, uh, th you know, although this is a later watch from the mid-30s, uh, it still um, appears to be of, of, of high quality. Uh, Waltham, of course, is uh, uh, the oldest and one of the largest of the great old American watch brands had been around since before the Civil War. Here now I'm prying up the barrel bridge. And I'll put that away. And I need to remove now the train bridge. Uh, before I can uh, access the rest of the gears and remove that uh, mainspring barrel. So another three screws. Okay, there it comes off, and you see how I lift it up straight off the pillar plate. Now this uh, this bridge uh, doesn't have a, a serial number on it. Uh, earlier Waltham's, actually er, most earlier American watches would have a serial number on almost every part. Uh, but I guess uh, Waltham um, ceased uh, uh, marking their bridges at this time. So that's the center wheel now. And here's the third wheel. Get a look at that. See the pivots. And this is the fourth wheel. That wheel rotates once a minute and it holds the second hand. Now here is a steel escape wheel. All these gears I will... Uh, clean and um, uh, use uh, or uh, drive the, the pivots into pithwood to clean any oil off. Now there's the, the barrel that I just took out. More on that later. And this is the, um, the set of winding gears. Um, there's a few parts to this. Uh, the first piece that I want to remove is um, uh, the stem, which contains the sliding gear, and the winding pinion. Okay, now I'm taking off some of the setting gears. There's a cover plate, which uh, needs a little persuasion to come off. There it goes. That was the minute wheel. And a setting gear just out of view. There it is.
the whole jewel should not be oiled, so the bridge should come off without the pallet fork sticking to it. Sometimes it, it does. There you see the uh, pallet fork, kind of an odd-shaped uh, piece with a couple stones in it. Okay, now with the, the gear train all removed, the next part I'm going to remove is a, is a cover plate for the yoke and yoke spring. This watch is a lever set watch. Um, I believe there's also a, a pendant set version of this movement. This, uh, this cover plate I'm removing and screw hold that yoke and spring in place. Now I guard against that spring flying away. And I was successful. Let's remove that spring. And that spring is um, rests on a, a pin or a post. The other end of that pin is the setting lever. There's the screw. And there goes the setting lever. Now this is the, the click. The Waltham has a nice uh, click design, so the click and click spring are a single part. Makes installation and removal pretty easy. There you get a look at it. So as far as cleaning the watch, um, I uh, use a, uh, a sonic cleaner, sonicator, and uh, I make my own cleaning solutions. I, I, I typically don't... Uh, uh, I don't film that process, but I will show the cleaning of the jewels, or at least the initial cleaning of the jewels. This is with peg wood. And so I sharpen this, uh, this piece of wood. Clean out the, uh, the, the jewels. There tends to be um, old oils, gummy deposits that uh, are difficult to clean up, uh, even, with a, even with a sonic cleaner. Uh, so this this peg wood helps uh, loosen that uh, that old oil, and it also gives me a chance to really inspect the jewels, look for cracks and other problems. So even with uh, modern cleaning methods and solutions, uh, uh, I still use peg wood. So this is the barrel. Uh, it's already been cleaned and the mainspring inserted. And I'd like to point out the, the this jewel in the center. And that's the jeweled barrel. And uh, there's a um, an arbor which um, uh, w w which goes in, into that barrel. The wheel on the barrel actually um, uh, rotates uh, with the uh, with the mainspring. While that arbor is stationary, the arbor turns, or the inner arbor turns when you wind, and the uh, uh, the wheel turns when the uh, when the watch is run, and this is typical of the uh, Waltham safety barrel, at least one uh, one variation of it with the with the jewels. So with that all installed, I'm going to set that aside and begin reassembling the watch. Pretty much in reverse order. Here's the setting lever. Now I I apply a little bit of oil uh, to the bottom of that screw, uh, the, the screw head, uh, since that is a moving part. And now this is the winding pinion. Check uh, uh, check the pinions for uh, especially this winding pinion for wear. Um, there was a little bit of wear um, on this pinion. But um, I didn't have a spare, and uh, the wear um, wasn't too bad. 
So I'm going to I'm going to try and I'm going to try and use it. And if there's any difficulty in winding, then uh, then I'll replace the I'll replace that gear. Here I'm just putting some grease on that part to lubricate it and installing it in the watch. This is now the, the yoke. Now here I'm applying some grease to the the bearing surfaces of the um, of that winding arbor. And I'll position the yoke spring into place, holding everything down until I'm certain that uh, it's not going to fly off and it looks good. Now once I get this cover plate on, then I'm really sure it's not going to fly off can be a tense uh, couple of minutes here getting this uh, this this cover plate on but once it's on it's pretty easy going and now I'm uh, oiling the watch again uh, for the mainspring arbor placing some oil on the pillar plate now I place the uh, barrel there and assemble the gears I'll start with the escape wheel, and here's the fourth wheel. The third wheel. And last, the center wheel. Pretty smart arrangement of gears, I'd say. This is the barrel bridge. Now here is the, um, the train bridge, which gave me a little bit of trouble uh, getting into position, but uh, I worked slowly on this and um, uh, really, really didn't get uh, good video of the whole process. But uh, take my word for it; it didn't go straight in um, all at once. Okay, now I'm tightening the screws and. This video is a little bit overexposed, so I decided not to show you the installation of the ratchet wheel and crown wheel. Um, but as a bonus, I'll show some extra things. Now here's the pallet fork. And to, to install the pallet fork, I, I use a, um, um, a four times loop, which really helps me verify that that pivot is <clears throat> excuse me is going into the jewel because I don't want to make a mistake here this is this is a rather large um, beefy bridge for a pallet fork I just want to make sure I don't drop it Now I'm testing that the pallet fork is, and the gear train is is, is free, so you see I move the um, that uh, that fork end of the pallet to the center, and put a little bit of tension on the center wheel. Okay, now here's the balance wheel, and there's an issue with it. It's out of flat. So before I install the balance, I'll need to correct that, which I did off camera. So now here I'm showing you the alternate method of installing the balance. And this takes advantage of the, uh, the Waltham patented hairspring stud, which I'll show you in a moment. So I place the uh, balance in position. It's uh, detached from the bridge. Now here's the bridge, or more properly called the, the balance cock, because it has one screw. and just carefully nudge them into position. Once everything's in the right uh, place, the uh, the balance tends to 
um, uh, go into motion freely and there it looks nice. So now I, the next step is to um, install the hairspring stud. So first I need to work it around the regulator because it was trapped on the other side. And now I'm going to install the balance cock screw because that just makes everything coming up next easier. Now here is the, um, uh, you can see the, the hairspring stud. It's kind of a wedge, wedge shaped. And uh, positioning it into the balance cock, I loosen the stud screw, uh, press the stud into place, and then I tighten the screw. And that completes the installation. I just find this, uh, this method is, um, it takes a little bit longer, I think, than installing the balance and balance cock together. But I find it's... Uh, it's just a, to me, it's a, it's a, an easier way of installing the balance. Okay. So now I'm winding it up, putting some power on the mainspring and the balance takes right off. Really happy to see that. I'll time it later, but for now I'm going to install the rest of the setting gears. First, I'm uh, oiling the posts. That was the center wheel post. And here's the winding gear post. I'm placing a, a, a small drop of heavier oil. Um, being careful to oil only the post and not the, not the plate. This is the uh, cannon pinion, which is uh, the post for the, or which holds the minute hand. That's the minute wheel. the setting gear and the cover plate for that setting gear and minute wheel. And I want to carefully position that screw. If I drop it, I may be in big trouble, but it all went well. Okay. Now I'm placing a drop of oil on the cannon pinion. And there is the hour wheel which holds the hour hand and a dial washer. Now I position the, uh, the dial again. I had to move the setting lever out because it was blocking the dial. And I tighten the dial feet screws. The hole for the, the, the seconds hand was a little bit off center. So I decided to install the seconds hand just to make sure it, uh, um, there wasn't anything in the way and it looked fine. So now with the, uh, the watch complete, I'm going to, the movement complete, I'm going to put it back in the case. You can see about half of that, but it goes in and a, uh, case screw to to keep it in the case and as I screw that in the other case screw is uh, on the bench next to me and I'll install that off camera so now I'm installing the hour hand pressing it down and parallel with the dial. Now here is the minute hand. I then test the setting of the watch. That looks perfect. And now let's time it. So to time a watch like this, um, important to know the lift angle if you can, uh, to read, to get a good reading of the amplitude. Um, this is keeping excellent time with really nice amplitude. You can see here's the balance now in slow motion and it's giving a good um, uh, 270 plus amplitude as read on the, on the time grapher. And this is a completed watch. Um, I've run this watch now for, it's been running on my, uh, on my bench for about three days in the, in this position. 
uh, gaining only 10 seconds uh, during that time. So very happy to see that. A, a pretty amazing improvement from where it was when I started. Uh, down from 20 minutes fast to uh, 10 seconds a day fast. Or sorry, 3 seconds a day fast roughly. And it's reasonable to ask, I think, why the watch was running so fast to begin with. Um, I'd say it really, there really wasn't just one cause. It was a number of things. It was a watch um, past due for service uh, that needed to be cleaned and re-oiled. It was also the uh, the large bead error, I think, had something to do with it. And the uh, the fact that the balance was um, was out of flat and even touching the um, uh, the balance cock at points. Um, so um, that's all those issues have been um, dealt with, and we have a completed watch that is ready to go back to the owner. I'd like to thank you all for tuning into my channel. This is Red Vitus, and I hope to see you again.